a whole new thing. Yes, it is. And um, I believe in the preached word of the Lord. I, I would I was born to preach. But I think we need to get ready because I believe that God is going to begin to do things in such unusual manners and uh, a wonderful um, glory of God. The Lord gave us a great word of the Lord yesterday in prayer meeting. And um, I, I want to preach you something I really feel like is revelation to me. I've really I've never seen this before. And we're going to read uh, three different portions of Scripture. We're going to um, start out in Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to start with verse 20, or Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm also going to um, read out of Luke chapter 4, verse 6, and we're going to take our last verse out of Matthew chapter 28 <clears throat> and verse 18. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 God said let us make man in our image after our likeness this is what I want you to get and let them have dominion then he says this is what they're going to have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them god blessed them god said unto them be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it and have dominion and then to the last part he says over every living thing that moveth upon the earth uh, as we go to our next verse in luke chapter uh, 10 you cannot have dominion unless you are like god God decreed that man would have dominion, but then he said he's got to look like us and he's got to act like us. Out of um, Luke chapter 10, I hope this, I can't read my own writing sometimes. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Now let's go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 and um, this is the setting where the devil is engaging Jesus in conversation in the wilderness and in the fourth chapter after a couple of temptations verse 5 and the devil taketh him Jesus up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. This was not a natural vision. He is showing Jesus in the spirit realm all the kingdoms of the world. And then he makes this profound statement. This is what the devil says to Jesus. And the devil said unto him, the King James uses the word power, but it's translated, and this is very key. This is not power. This is authority. He says, all this authority will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So he's looking at Jesus, and he's making a correct statement. He said, this authority was delivered to me. God could not take the devil's authority from him at this point because the devil obtained it legally. He did not subdue it. He did not, he did not steal it. Adam gave to the devil 
the authority or the dominion that God gave to Adam. And then one more verse, Matthew chapter 28. Verse 16, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus, verse 18, came, spake unto them, saying, All, not word, not power, it's bad translation, all authority is given unto me. Now remember in the Genesis, God gives Adam dominion, but only over the earth. This is after resurrection. Jesus makes this statement and he says, all authority is given unto me, not just in the earth, but in heavenly places. Does not the Bible say that the devil is the prince of the power of the air, that he is in heavenly places? So, Lord, we thank you. God, that you are still unveiling the mystery that has been hid from other ages and other generations. That God, you will need leave nothing un, that will be veiled when the church leaves. That God, we thank you that over these next few short years, there will be profound understanding that is going to cloak thy people that God we are stepping over into revelation and mysteries that are going to equip us to accomplish the word of the Lord God bless you, you can be seated the world is in a mess because the church lost its militant unction. We traded freedom from demons for temporary prosperity. There are leaders today that would rather have 5,000 saints in their sanctuary that are captives than to have 100 in the building that are free. The mess that we are in politically and morally on every front in the earth can only be laid at the feet of the church and even more so at the feet of ministry. And the enemy brought in this false narrative that the church should only be about love. But love does not mean that you have to embrace sin. Love, hallelujah, real love means telling somebody the truth. If a doctor has a close friend that comes in and the man's not feeling well and they have been companions over the years and maybe went on vacation together and the guy says, Doc, I'm not, I'm not feeling well. And he does an examination, he does an MRI and he realizes this guy has a massive tumor of cancer in his body. 
Love is not telling him, oh, you're fine, go home. Everything will be all right. Because he doesn't want to create some immediate problems. Love says, you got a tumor, but if we can cut it out, we can extend your life. We are coming into a realm where God is going to use the word of the Lord that is sharper than any two-edged sword to begin to cut out the cancer of sin that is in the house of God and radically rejuvenate the church of the Most High. When you go back to the New Testament, it is full of military terms. Battle, soldier, war, weapons, enemies, armor. All of these are terms that God associates with the body of Christ. If you would ask the liberals today, is there an enemy in the earth? They would have no problem telling you, yes, there is, and that enemy are Christians. So why would it not be the same for us to declare? It's not men and women that are the enemy of the church. It is the demonic spirits in the atmosphere. When Jesus comes on the scene, he is coming, the Bible says, to destroy the works of the devil. That's why he was manifested. He is coming to right wrongs. The devil recognizes to some degree. I don't believe the enemy knows everything. I don't believe the devil is all-knowing. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He is a man, according to Isaiah. Because the Bible says when we see him in eternity, we will say, is this the man that made nations tremble and the earth to shake? He knew there was something different about Jesus. And we know that even as an early age that there were attempts to kill baby Jesus. Herod put a hit out on him, causing many, many babies to be killed there in the area where Jesus was. But from the age of birth to the age of 30, there are no accounts of there ever being a battle engagement between God manifested in flesh called Jesus and the devil. In fact, his life is silent pretty much except for a short view into him at the age of 12 as he is confounding the lawyers and the scribes of that day in the temple. But the Bible was not interested in describing to us the natural life of Jesus. He waited until Jesus was thrust into purpose. And the moment that Jesus Christ is thrust into purpose, we begin to get an account of the Gospels of what Jesus was capable of. To this point, Jesus is unusual. The reason being is because he has no natural father and he has no sin in him. He is sinless. But the absence of sin does not mean you are anointed. This is a mistake a lot of believers make in thinking because I am a good person, then I am powerful. Good is not righteousness. There's going to be a lot of good people probably miss heaven. Sincerity doesn't make it true. Muslims are sincere. Buddhists are sincere. Hindus are sincere. But it doesn't mean it's truth. 
uh, if you believe the Bible, he says, there is only one way, and Jesus is that way. And if any man enter into any other way, he is the same as a thief and a robber. So Jesus, hallelujah, is getting ready to be thrust into his purpose. He does not operate in ministry because he's not operating in authority. It takes the Holy Ghost to operate in authority. This is why so much of the body of Christ who denies the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now hear me. You can go to heaven and not speak in tongues. We're not going to draw a theological sword there. Heaven is going to be filled with men and women that did not speak in tongues, but they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's not what I want to deal with. What I want to deal with is you will never stop the onslaught of the demonic powers in the earth without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because there has to be an infilling. It's not tongues. I know people that are mean as a devil that speak in tongues. I was raised in Pentecost, some of the most unforgiving, critical, mean, but they could get in the altar and just speak in tongues, and somehow they thought that was all. You can go to hell and speak in tongues. You can't. It's the utterance of the Lord. Jesus at the age of 30, feel this, feels this unction that drives him down the valley to Galilee. There his cousin is baptizing, and he has felt impressed. He goes to John. He says, I need to be baptized. Whenever you're getting ready to be thrust into your purpose, you will not have a full understanding of what you're feeling, but there will be this driving force that begins to push you into another realm, into another direction. He looks at John and he says, you got to baptize me. John, with hesitation and trepidation, takes Jesus, the incarnate God Almighty, buries him in the waters of baptism. When he goes into the waters of baptism, the Bible says when he comes out, heaven opens and the Holy Ghost comes out of heaven, looks like a dove, settles on Jesus. And from that moment on, he is clothed with authority and power to walk in the ministry that God has called him in. When he now begins to move through the earth, he is doing what no man has ever done. He can walk into a room full of men that are sick and begin to speak the word and demons begin to flee. The interesting thing about this is that Jesus has authority, but so does the devil. The devil has not been stripped of his authority. So you have two conflicting powers entities that are in the earth and both of them have authority and you would think well that doesn't make sense but it does because the devil only had authority in the earth Jesus has authority in the heavenlies and whoever rules in the heavenlies rules in the earth 
This is why when you and I get saved, the Bible says that eternally that we are made to sit in heavenly places. This is why when I tell you prophetically that ambulances will line up at the door of this church and we will see men and women healed of all kinds of sickness and disease. How can we say that? Because we have the authority over demons in the earth because we sit with him in heavenly places. This is why the devil could not kill Jesus ever. Didn't matter how much they tried to take him down. Why? Because the authority of Jesus trumped the authority of the devil.